Hello everyone, it's Josh with uh, JE Vintage Minis in uh, Orlando, Florida. We're going to revisit this ATC. I worked on it in another video, but uh, the brakes are excessively squeaky. I can't stand it, so we're going to do a shoe uh, replacement. I'll show you how to get into that area and then uh, put the shoes in and get the brakes adjusted. Um, a couple other little things I'll do on this bike, but we'll just focus on the... Um, <clears throat> on the uh, brake uh, service work here. Uh, just a quick walk around. This is an 83. Uh, really nice shape. Just going to give you guys a visual. For those of you that like these ATC 70s. So I just like uh, I like to approach any of these videos as if uh, you're, you know we're just beginners and haven't really done any of this work on any of our motorcycles or ATCs, etc. Uh, so just basic. It's a mechanical brake. You got your pull lever here. Uh, your brake line runs in down into the frame, and then it runs on to the back, and you essentially have a an arm here that runs on a cam. This is where under this cover there's a brake drum and you locate your brake shoes in there. Uh, basically you just pull the cable and it pulls this arm and it, uh, the cam turns and uh, expands the brake shoes which will then in turn uh, rub up against your, your uh, outer drum that spins. Uh, so we just need to work on the right side of the bike, get our rim demounted uh, just got a bolt here, castle nut, and we'll be able to slide it off. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, I just use a simple stand. I'll show you what I what I use. So nothing fancy here. Gets uh, I do a lot of work on all these old vintage Honda bikes, mini bikes, and uh, have yet to purchase a uh, expensive stand. I just use these collapsible uh, foot stools. Uh, get them on Amazon. Uh, you can find them for eight bucks or something like that ship so it's good for 300 pounds it's the right height lifts everything up fits underneath the z50s uh, sits under the zt70s i believe if not i'll just put a couple pieces of wood but that's how i that's how i approach this stuff uh, so there you go that's the actual one i just bought on amazon uh, on january 8th here utopia you get two of them for 19 bucks actually I think I got them for like 16 bucks price went up a little bit uh, but here you go Amazon Prime shipped to you um, for only uh, nine dollars each so just find a good center of balance on the engine set it on your stand you want to get that wheel up which is off the ground right now and then we can begin to, to disassemble So this is the essentials to do this job. I uh, using a, a driver, a battery operated driver. You can get a um, ratchet um, socket wrench. Socket wise, you need a 10 millimeter, a 14 millimeter deep socket, and a 19 millimeter. Uh, I preferably a deep 19 millimeter. I don't have one, so I have a shallow um, 19 millimeter needle nose pliers. Your choice of brakes, shoes, uh, a little bit of assembly grease, bearing grease, and that's about it. And maybe some paper towels to clean your hands. Alright, let's get at it. First thing is, if you have it, hopefully, I got a castle nut on here, so you should have a, um, eh, whatever they're called, cotter pen. I already bent it and pulled it off. So you use your needle and those pliers with. That's where I was talking about a 19 millimeter. Uh, socket it's better to have a deep socket at this point because this axle sticks out a little further but i'll make it work you pull your wheel down next up is the axle spacer itself now we got access to our drum cover. Uh, some originally you'll have a um, undermount shield here, so we got to get the shield removed first, and then we can access the um, 
drum cover. So I'll go ahead and get those off. You're gonna have to go around the other side of the bike too. 10 millimeter bolt on all these, uh, 10 meters, millimeter socket on all those bolts. So we got our lower shield off. That's four bolts, 10 millimeter bolts. Should have two bolts here left over for your shield. Now you can take your brake cover off. I'm sorry, there's actually three bolts. All right, so next up, we're gonna wanna come back here on this brake arm and loosen up the 14 millimeter um, nut on the brake arm. Deep socket, just back this out. By doing that, you're uh, releasing the tension on the brake cam arm, so the shoes should pull back and retract off the shoe, or off the uh, drum if they're seized. Uh, we'll find out, uh, but otherwise it should pull it back so we can pull this drum off. see if this comes off. It's a good sign. So that's your drum. This looks clean inside. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, look at those shoes off there. These are original Honda pads and they actually don't look worn too bad or, you know, they look good. I'm not quite in and on here in this surface area. This is nice and smooth. I don't feel any pits or anything in the, inside the um, drum. But I'm going to replace them because when you hit the brakes on this bike with these shoes on it, it's just like this horrible squeal metal sound. So. Not quite sure why it's doing that, but uh, we'll replace it and uh, hopefully that resolves that noise. I um, guess I'm not sure if these have asbestos in them either. I don't know. That's a good question. So with as much as I'm messing around with these old vintage bikes and CT70s, Z50s, etc., I never really thought too hard on it, but I should have uh, just asbestos if that's in the pads. I mean, I'm pulling off these old crusty 50 year old brake shoes on all these bikes. So get some gloves on. I'm gonna throw it in a bag and uh, hold my breath. <laughs> Probably best to put a mask on or something like that. Uh, but first thing, if it's all original, you're gonna have a cotter pen. So let's get that pen removed. get your washer and then we'll just uh, kind of fold this over should come right off and then I'll just throw that in the bag and dispose of it um, I don't have it with me but I'm gonna grab a little towel and just get some of this uh, brake dust and other grime out of there. So let's put our uh, focus on the shoe now. We'll just get them assembled with the spring. Uh, they're symmetrical, so they no um, or a wrong way to put them together. Just make sure your rounded side goes to the round and the flat to the flat. And just put our springs on. Those are going to be ready to be installed. 
All right, so I got that all cleaned up. Just got some of the residual dust out of there. I'm going to put a little, just a little bit of grease on the connecting points for the shoe. Okay, now we'll put the shoe on that we assembled. Flat the flat and round the round. Just take one side. I don't know if we can see that or not. I'm just kind of bending the shoe. We'll do it from this side. I'm trying to seat that in. And then you're gonna kind of have to muscle this back over. Shouldn't be too bad. Hopefully I'm not blocking the camera here, view. So that's in there. So just a quick view just to show you how this brake shoe works with the inner uh, drum is when that arm is pulled, this cam is gonna rotate and you can see how it pushes the shoe out. So if you wanted to know. Alright, so that's on. Let's get our washer back on. And the cutter pin. Beers is mangled up. Get a new cutter pin if it's reusable. Go for it. All right, so I put a little grease on here in the spline area because I wanted to be nice to the next person who has to service this. Um, I've had a drum seize up on the axle and super difficult to get off. Uh, put a little grease on the uh, axle tube, remaining length of the outer axle, and then we'll slide this guy on. Drum on. So we'll do the reverse of disassembly. We'll get our brake cover back on and then I will put the lower mount shield on so let me do that axle tube on I'm gonna put this rim and tire back on a little bit of grease on that spline here that this uh, hub is going on to Washer, thick washer. Actually, I think this axle is probably good. Oh. So we'll get our thick axle, castle nut, cotter pin on, and we'll tighten that down. So like ETC 70 manual. Oh, there it is. Brake dust contains asbestos. So I got an original shoe in there. It was a Honda shoe, so just FYI, be careful. And also, just so we get the truth here, this is the uh, ATC 70 manual for the brake. We're gonna adjust, make the brake adjustment now, but uh, your free play that they want you to have is five days to three quarter inch on your handle, as shown. So we'll adjust the uh, brake so that we get that uh, free play there. So that's your nut for the adjustment and you're gonna make that tight or loose based on the free play that you get in your handlebar. You just make those adjustments and you can test by rolling the bike forward and seeing how much you have to pull before it grabs on the shoe. Alright, so that's pretty much it guys for the tutorial on the brake change. Please subscribe uh, appreciate it. Have a good day.
All right, so for all the concerned ones out there, my nails are back to normal. I got tired of fielding so many questions of why my nails are painted. Kind of a ridiculous topic to have to defend myself over. But uh, for anyone that didn't catch it, I have a five-year-old daughter, and she painted my nails the other day. And you know, I could care less. I'm I'm not afraid to wear some nail polish because uh, you know it's all in good fun for my family and my daughter and stuff. But I got tons of people kind of sending messages to me of like concern that they wouldn't finish my videos over my nail colors on my hand I don't know whatever anyways my nails are back to normal uh, so I'll continue on as business and focus on Honda stuff